Obviously, today we're going to be talking about maintaining motivation. That's been a thing on um, the last week, completely understandable. It's that time of year. Also, had some other questions which we'll get into. Uh, you guys aren't hearing an echo when any of you speak, right? Everything sounds crystal clear? Yeah, everything's clear. All right, perfect. All right, so then we'll head right into it then. So before we do that, let's just head on down the lines. And Michelle was telling me off air. She was here a minute or so before anyone else was. So uh, Michelle, just share with the group how you're doing this week. I know you said you're dealing with uh, potentially a cold coming on. Yes. So I've been doing well, except for the last two days I haven't worked out um, because of the cold that I'm having. But other than that, I'm okay. I'm doing good. All right. Great. And Sheila, how's everything going on your end? I know you said a little earlier in the week, nutrition was kind of tough, but it looked like you right. got back on track yesterday. Yeah, I was really pleased. And so um feeling good about that. It's just up and down. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I could stay the, the motivated the way I was before. So mm -hmm. that's just frustrating. Yeah, I hear you. And uh, hopefully there's someone going to share with you guys later on in the call that might help remedy that, uh, especially since I know you have a competitive edge and that's <laughs> obviously what drove you during the beta program into Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, we, we um, we'll go over some other strategies you can use too. So whether you have a challenge or something like that going on or not, you'll mm -hmm. be able to kind of stay the course. And then uh, Lisa, how's everything going on your end? Nutrition, fine. Workouts, not so fine. <laughs> I just, it's just so you and Sheila are like the polar opposites now. Yeah, so. no, maybe we got together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay all right so we're gonna tackle both today i know michelle you also had a question about you know exercise to help kind of weight loss and burning fat so we'll get into that as well so uh since your motivation was kind of like the primary topic in our check-ins and of what's going on in the past week let's get into it so like you guys just pointed out lisa nutrition's on track but fitness <laughs> you need a little bit of motivation from and then Sheila, complete opposite, you need more motivation <laughs> nutrition, but you're doing well with fitness. So we're going to yeah. tackle both. So here's the truth about motivation. And, and Sheila, you kind of alluded to it before where you wish that you had that same level of enthusiasm and motivation that you had during the beta or much mm -hmm. of the beta program. And the truth is, it's not always going to be there. I, I wish it was. Uh, and, I, and I wish I had something hippy dippy that I could share, but it's, it's really not going to be, <laughs> it's going to be about showing up every day and, you know, even on days where you don't want to. So we're going to start with fitness motivation because there are some different tactics that I personally use and that I instruct a lot of my you know, clients to use and group members as well. So fitness motivation. So you know, Lisa, you'd mentioned that earlier in the week you were tired, busy, and you're finding excuses not to get it in. So I call this strategy set it and forget it. So much like an instant pot or something like that. Basically, I just ask you schedule your workout in your calendar at a time. So if you're planning to work out on a certain day, maybe the night before or early that morning, schedule your workout in your calendar at a time that you're extremely unlikely to have things pop up. I know I've mentioned in the past mm -hmm. that Often that's probably earlier in the day, like maybe in the morning before you head to work. I know for all three of you, that's kind of terrible, but unfortunately sometimes that's what we have to do, especially if we seem to find that as the day goes on, not only do we have the tasks that we know we have to accomplish that day, but then other stuff gets piled on. And before you know it, you are exhausted and tired and you're looking for a way out. So, but I'd schedule it and then unless it's life for death. So unless you get a call saying that your, your husband's in the hospital or you're one of your children's in the hospital or family members in the hospital, something like that, I wouldn't skip it. Like treat it like a meeting at work. So I know all three of you work in education, oh, two of you work in education. And I know Michelle, you work in an office. So if one of your superiors, so in the education case, maybe the superintendent's coming into your school and is meeting with you at 10 a.m., you're not missing that meeting for practically anything. And Michelle, same with you. If, you. if your boss, the person who runs the firm you work at, asks you to come in and meet with him at 10 a.m. and you're at work that day, you're going to be there. So you need to kind of treat it like that. I know it's hard because, honestly, it's not kind of like that. But your health is important. So just try to keep that in perspective. But something I've found is, like, I book my calendar up like that every day. 
And even when it's a workout, I will schedule that in, you know, in the morning, I'll get that out of the way. And then I'll tackle like the email I send to my list and all the social media postings and seeing my clients and things like that. So I found that that's really worked for me. And, you know, obviously it's not going to be perfect. There may be days where you still talk yourself out of it in some way, shape or form. But if you do this, I found that the likelihood of me doing it when I have it on my calendar versus do not versus doing it when I'm just like, okay, today I'm going to work out this afternoon. And then I find ways not to do it. I find that that actually helps. It's like some weird mental thing. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And any questions, comments, concerns about that or all good? All good. Sometimes yep. it's good to do a workout with a friend because then if you have to cancel on them, you look like the jerk. So <laughs> yeah, accountability is a big thing. I mean, I know we have that in the group, but that's at the end of the day. So if you have someone during the day, whether it is like Michelle just said, a, a fit a workout partner, maybe you have your spouse hold you up to that. Maybe you have one of your kids hold you up to that, whatever it is that might actually help too. So not only putting it on your calendar, but having someone to answer to if you were supposed to do it that day and you don't do it, I think that can help as well. That's, that's definitely a good point. Uh, any, anything else on this before we move forward? No. No. Nope. Nope. All right. So also, sometimes the best workouts are when you force yourself. So Lisa, you mentioned, I think this was yesterday that you forced yourself. And yep. Michelle, um, over the weekend, you mentioned that you also forced yourself over the weekend. So. Yes. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes when it comes to fitness, you got to do it. You're going to be tired. You're going to be stressed. You're going to want to do anything else but that. But um, uh, uh, truth be told, at least in my, my case, when I forced myself to work out on days where I really didn't want to and I was looking for a way out, I actually find that you know, whether the workout was good or not is irrelevant. I actually feel better and I feel more accomplished when I finish that. I'm not sure if you guys felt the same way when you forced yourself in the last few days. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? In all honesty, I kind of used the yoga as I settled for yoga. I really wanted to do a hit workout, but mm -hmm. I just couldn't muster up the energy. So that was my compromise. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably why I didn't feel as successful. I oh, mean, okay. I felt like, okay, at least I did something. Yeah. Well, that's, that's true. You did something. You, something is better than nothing. And like I said in the beginning, sometimes motivation, motivation waxes and wanes. There are going to be days and weeks where you're really on, as all three of you have experienced, and you've all, all three of you have experienced at various points, weeks where you're not on. And during those weeks where you're not on, that is the difference between continually you know, succeeding and taking steps towards your goal or maybe taking a step back. So, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to force yourself. Just like in life, I'm sure like doing the dishes and – cleaning the house and uh, doing all these other things that nobody actually enjoys. And if they do, I'm pretty sure they're a serial killer. Um, <laughs> that, that stuff that, that stuff that we have to do. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, that's exercise is going to fall in that category. We hope not. And that's why I ask you guys to do things you enjoy, maybe do things that are time sensitive so that you can get it done with and move on with your life that day. But yeah, sometimes you're just going to have to force it. And, uh, other times, yeah, I, I'm telling you, if you don't do this already, put it on your calendar. Like, find a time that seems to work where you're not, off, you're not likely to get distracted by, you know, kids or by, you know, whoever you live with. And I think that that'll help, that helps me out tremendously, just having it on the calendar. Then I treat it just like almost any other appointment I'd have that day. And like I said, it's not bulletproof, but it, it's pretty damn close. All right. Mm -hmm. So. We're moving on to nutrition. Um, before we move on to nutrition, fitness, everyone's good with the fitness motivation stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. All right, nutrition motivation, even more fun. So, um, so, so Sheila, and I, you, know, you mentioned this, I think it was two or three days ago. Yep. Um, so so you know, tell us a little bit about that day. So was it really as bad? I know you said there was dark chocolate, which isn't the end of the world. It's not like you – went to town on a Sunday from an ice cream place or um, ate a tub of ice cream while watching a movie. But uh, well, so what happened that day specifically that you wrote about this? Um, I don't know. It was just like I gave myself permission to have 
some chocolate and it ended up being more than I should have had. And, mm. and so, and that it was, it just seemed like it went from one thing to another thing. And, um, I have a tendency to do this where I'll, I'll either be totally on or totally off. Mm -hmm. There's like no in between. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something a lot of people do. And you also mentioned here that you tend to be an all or nothing person, yes. almost like, you know, do you find that you often, you know, if you're not perfect, then you'll kind of just continue to let things slide? Yes. Okay. Yep. I do. I dealt with that personally. Uh, Lisa, Michelle, do you find that you're like that or, or not as much? Not as much anymore. Okay, good. And I Michelle? find that if I have one of the reasons I try not to have something with sugar is I feel like once I have sugar, I, it makes me crave more sugar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I, I'm you know, insatiable. I can't get satisfied from it. And mm -hmm. that's what I do. So that's why I try and stay away from the sugar. Right. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. I mean, sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. And, you know, it's a scientific fact. And that's, that's insane. But th that just proves you're right. You know, that physically, you're going to want more of it. And then obviously, mentally, you're going to want more of it. And it's a vicious cycle. So, um, so to get into some of that stuff, um, First off, you got to acknowledge that you're not going to be perfect. If I made a bet with all three of you, we shook hands, we all put $1,000 into the pot, and we all said, uh, we're never going to eat a bad food again for the rest of our life. And let's say that $4,000 compounds at 20% interest every year. So in 10, 20 years, we're sitting pretty. Um, I can guarantee you none of the four of us will be perfect during that time frame, no matter what's at stake. Um, yeah. and we got to accept that we're human beings. We're not perfect. We can do our best. We can be as disciplined as we want. We can be consistent, but there will be times where we slip up. It's just, it's inevitable. And we can arm ourselves with the best information and the best strategies to attack different venues and stuff. And we certainly should use them as close to hundred percent of the time as possible. But there will be times where we slip. And the important thing it's to just remain consistent with it. So rather than letting things spiral out of control, you got to learn to forgive yourself. And then you got just got to get back on the horse. You had a bad day, Sheila, and you came back strong the next day. So I that's, know. I was happy. Yeah. And that's just what you got to do. And, you know, there may be another bad day between now and the end of the year for all of us. And th that's exactly what has to happen. Just don't let one day become two and then, make it a week. And then before we know it, we've, we've pissed away the rest of the year. We don't want to do that. <laughs> so before you sabotage you, this is something that I also have told my private clients, something that I personally think about, because I use my fitness pal to log my food. I, I still do. And while I'm not as meticulous, you know, like I mentioned to you guys, maybe last week, I was on the ketogenic diet. Obviously that's very meticulous. It's mm -hmm. if you guys think that this macro stuff is meticulous, you don't even want to try that. But um, before you sabotage, I stop and think about what I'm going to eat that's not good or me avoiding my workout and what's that going to do to help me reach my goals. And obviously, you'll immediately feel some shame and you'll feel kind of bad about it. And that's going to make you less likely to do it because if you feel that way and you actually think it through and then you still decide to eat that food or you still decide not to exercise when you are perfectly capable of doing it at that point, then you know yourself sabotaging and you don't want to feel that type of shame. Like it's, it's, it's kind of bad. And then why should you disappoint yourself? But that's another question I ask myself. Like I have this goal that I want to reach and this is not going to help me in any way, shape or form or me skipping a workout today. If it's planned. It's not going to help me in any way, shape or form. So why should I disappoint myself? Uh, I'm definitely worth reaching my goals it's worth reaching my goals not just for myself but um you know whether it's for your kids or whether it's for your spouse or whether it's for your friends or family um your students your coworkers, whoever it is you don't want to disappoint yourself because then in a way you're also going to let them down so always ask yourself before you put that bad food in your mouth or you drink that bad beverage or before you skip a workout what good is this going to do me and the answer is always going to be, it's not going to do you any good. So don't disappoint yourself. Uh, nothing to set yourself up for there. It's, it's simple. It's almost stupid, but it, it works. Like I'll, I'll be about to log it into my fitness pal. And that was the other thing. <clears throat> log your food. 
So mm -hmm. you can use my fitness pal. All three of you are on my fitness pal, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So have you, are, are all three of you still using it to monitor your food? Yes. yes. Perfect. So everyone said yes, right? I, I, everyone said it together. So I wasn't sure. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. So then, so then everyone's using my fitness pal. So it makes you think twice. And what I ask people to do, some people like to log everything at the end of the night. I don't think that's a good idea because you might forget something. I think it's good that like literally right as you eat it, it takes two seconds once you familiarize yourself. Obviously, all mm -hmm. three of you are pros at this point. So you go in there and you're about to log in uh, half a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Probably not <laughs> going to make you feel good. So you want you want to think twice. It does make you think twice. And that's a way to hold yourself accountable too. And Michelle mentioned before, maybe having a workout partner or maybe having someone in your family or a friend holding you accountable. And that might be a good strategy too. But this is a form of self accountability where you got to log it in. It's going to stay there. And then if you actually enter it and you actually add it to your food diary, it's like staring back and you're like, Oh, what am I doing? Like, why am I going to eat this? It really makes you think twice and makes you a lot less likely to actually have that food. And then I mentioned to you guys, as you enter the program, if it ever does become a serious issue, which I don't foresee being an issue with all three of you or, and serious meaning like for a week or more, you go off the rails and it's just uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I do, will be offering individual accountability. So if that becomes an issue, that's something we can add on after the new year. I know a couple of you had expressed, potential interest in that anyway. So any final questions about motivation, whether it's nutrition or fitness? Oh. Nope. nope. No, I'm good. Cool. All right. Very seamless. Good. So questions. So I asked about any other questions. Most of them were about the motivation, but Michelle had the lone one that was not about motivation. And that was, she wants to know about the best exercises for weight loss just glider and a weight routine that I showed her um, when we worked together privately, as well as a weak turbo jam. I don't know what that is, but oh, it's awesome. It's, oh, it's good. Okay. <laughs> um, so you're doing that two times a week, and then you're doing three to four times a week um, with that. So should you be changing anything in your routine? <clears throat> so the answer to that is yes, and the reason for that is because of the said principle. This was like when I got my first personal training certification over 10 years ago, when I actually had hair, um, <laughs> one of the first things that I was like, oh, that's interesting. So the said principle states that mm -hmm. the body adapts to the demands being placed upon it. So mm -hmm. they use an example of male men and women. So obviously, I don't think any of you have been a male, man, male woman in your <laughs> cases, but nope. you know, they do drive a lot, but they do walk quite a bit, many, many miles a day. They're lugging a big bag of right. envelopes and postcards and they have big packages that they have to bend down, pick up, bend down again, and drop mm -hmm. off at the door. It's a pretty exhausting job, but more than half of them still to this day in the United States and in most parts of the world are overweight. And that's due to the fact sure. that their bodies have adapted to the rigors of their jobs. So even though they are walking miles a day and they're lugging these big packages and envelopes and all these different things their bodies have adapted to it they often don't have the best lifestyle habits outside of their job and as a result after a while they'll still continue to put on weight even though they probably you know mm -hmm. walk four times or five times more than the four of us put together over the course of a day sure. so what i would recommend which it sounds like you do to an extent is a mix of high and low intensity exercise throughout the week mm -hmm. so you've been using the glider you've been going through the same weight um well not always the same weight training things we always change it up but you know same type of things and i think it's important that maybe you throw in some other stuff so maybe you do yoga another time or you try some yoga stuff maybe uh maybe you try some other workouts maybe you try some new machines uh maybe you try another cardio machine just just mm -hmm. keep changing it up and another thing too is like constantly challenge yourself so the example that I would use that's relevant to, to you, Michelle, is when we did the glider, we started at what, like eight minutes on the glider, then we worked up to 10, then 12, and now you're doing 20 plus. Um, that's good because you're continually building. Um, so you got to keep doing that. And 
as you continually challenge yourself with both high and low intensity exercise throughout the week, trying movements and things that you hadn't done before, maybe getting a few more reps. If you're doing like a HIIT workout, maybe doing a few more reps than you had the last time within the 20 or 30 seconds or whatever it is, um, that's going to get you far. So you're, you're definitely on the right track. But if you want to change it up even more, you definitely feel free. You don't have to feel like you're boxed in doing the same stuff over and over and over again. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Did you have any other questions about that? How, how often should you change your routine up? Um, it depends. If, if you're like adding resistance or you're adding duration or you're adding reps, which it sounds like you pretty much have been anyway, um, not as often as you think. Um, I would throw in some new stuff maybe coming soon. Like I said, maybe, maybe yoga. That's just an example. It doesn't have to be yoga per se. Maybe kickboxing. I don't know. It could be any number of things. But usually it's to every two to three months. So within 90 days, if you find you're doing the same stuff week in, week out, and you're not really – or it becomes easy or you're not really challenging yourself much with it anymore, then you might want to mix things up a bit. But. Okay. Usually the rule of thumb for the said principle is up to 90 days. And then you might want to change things up if um, you're not okay. st still getting the consistent results that you want. All right. Um, yes. Any final questions about anything? I have a question about pears. Yeah. <laughs> Does a red pear have more <laughs> sugar than your typical, you know, like green pear or Bartlett pear? I have no idea, <laughs> in all honesty. Um, you might want to look into that. So just go into Google, type uh, red pear glycemic index and glycemic load and see if it is any different. There's often a lot of sites have charts that will break down like different types of even the same fruit and you'll be able to see if there is any noticeable difference like i know with beans some beans aren't as starchy as others mm -hmm. so um yeah just 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 google it and, and you'll find but to for to my knowledge all pears are fine i i've not seen anything about well all pears are good except for this one i haven't seen anything about that but if you want okay. to double check just google it okay cool any other questions mm -mm. okay all right, so challenge. So I have a new challenge. This will be a good one. Uh, like I said before, and like we talked about privately, and you guys signed up for this program, all of you expressed some potential interest in a personalized add-on in the new year after the holidays. So you might have a chance to try it out for free before you would decide whether or not you want to pay for it or do it or not. So starting tomorrow, which is the 7th, through until our next call, 13th, the person who stays within their phase, so most of you, you're staying in phase three, so, and they exercise every single day between <laughs> tomorrow and next Wednesday, you'll get to test out a free week. So I, I think Sheila and Lisa, you wanted to potentially do the personalized nutrition, and Michelle, you might want to do the personalized fitness. So you'll get to test that out for free, so you get a free week of it um, if you're able to hold up your end of the bargain in that regard. So again, person who stays within their phase. So that means also to be more specific, it, you got 50 or fewer net carbs to eat every day. You got to mm -hmm. stay there. Um, the person who hits their, their macros or net carbs each and every day between tomorrow and next Wednesday and exercises every day between now and next Wednesday will get a free week of their desired program add-on. That way you can try it out and you can see if you want to even do it or not. And, okay. but yeah, it's a little more individualized attention that you can get. All right. That's so referral good. program, everyone got their cards. That's good. I forgot to take the slide out. So my bad. <laughs> uh, but other than that, if there's nothing else, uh, good night. And we will talk next week about whatever, whatever pops up between now and then. And yeah, but challenge accepted. Everyone on board with that? Yep, definitely. All right, cool. So hopefully that keeps you all motivated at least for the next week in conjunction with some of the other things I talked about. And that's it. All right, guys, thanks for hopping on. That was actually pretty short. That's good.
and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And we will, uh, we'll check in with you guys in a little bit about how you guys did today. Great. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good week, everyone. All right, you yeah. too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.